You and your little posse are parading around school, calling yourselves the seven deadly sins? From now on, you will walk in the path of the Lord. Once people started calling us the sins, everything changed. Ladies, it's time we take our sins to the next level. The first thing I wanted to ask you was, um, obviously, you did the, the short film Butterscotch, mm -hmm. which, to quote the, the actual pitch, it, it's got extreme characters from two different worlds. This is feels like the natural step because it's extreme characters, but from the same world that want to be in two different worlds. Did, did the film start life just after Butterscotch? That's a good way of putting it. Um, no, not necessarily. It started like a little bit after. Um, the two are very different. And honestly, um, after the investor watched my short, we started having the conversation of making a feature. And I had this one project called Neon Candy I've always wanted to do, but um, I wanted to save that one for later in my career. So we ended up going with The Sinners, which was formerly called The Color Rose. Um, an idea I had seven years ago. And we actually had it backwards. So this time we found an investor first and then we wrote the script. So it was interesting to have it go that way. Aubrey Miller, she went missing last night. We're all in this together, okay? Well, you filmed it in your, in your hometown. So I imagine not just that, but the, the, the themes that you touched on that you deal with come from a very personal place. Yes, right. I, yes, sort of. Um, I think with, you know, how it feels to be in a clique, I grew up as a cheerleader and then was captain and a coach. And so I understand how it feels to sort of be in this, you know, world where there's these extreme pressures. And then also my mom was raised in a very religious household. So understanding and shining light on how it feels to be in this confined religious setting um, was something interesting that we wanted to touch on without, you know, offending anybody. Um, and I think we did just that. I mean, Aaron and Madison were incredible to write with. And I think between the three of us found one unique voice. Um, so it was interesting passing the script back and forth. We all sort of meshed together to develop this like similar dialogue and style. And it was really nice for it all to come together. Uh, I love the fact that you they said that you wanted to touch these scenes, but without, without hurting anyone. Um, yeah. I mean, today, just today, the news with Gina Carano has been fired from Mandalorian because of what she said on, on Twitter about religion. I mean, you've got to be very careful, not just, I mean, yours, this is a piece of fiction, but even, even though it's a piece of fiction, you've got to be very, very careful and you've got to be very aware of these things. So you must have been very conscious about that when you were filming, not, well, not just film, but writing also, no? Yeah, you know, we didn't choose one religion. So you'll notice that it's not Catholic, it's not Christianity, they're not Jehovah's Witness, but there's a little bit of kind of everything sprinkled in. So it's not single handedly like one religion that these girls are in, but um, rather just religion in itself and organized religion, you'd say. Satan trembles when he sees God face to face. They are asking for trouble with that behavior. <laughs> So obviously you took the, the cast and crew to your hometown, which must yeah. have been must have been a great homecoming for you. But at the same time, did you use did you use that opportunity to 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 get the t the team, especially the the cast, into this way of life of living in a I don't know what what, what this village what this town is like if it's a religious village town. Um, but did you did you use some some time before you shot the the film to kind of get everybody into living in this small town and and getting into the the swing of things? Actually, a little bit, just naturally, you know, um, the day one, the girls all arrived, I had them all meet at the mall, and I gave them a camera and they went around taking pictures of each other and with each other and they went in the photo booths and went shopping and it was a nice bonding experience for the girls to get together and first meet doing like a fun activity and then we had a table read and then while they were there, you know, they would go out to lunch and they would, you know, hang out on their off time and it really was us together in this one town because on the days where you're not filming you don't know anybody else so naturally we would all hang out together um and it was you know it's a beautiful town Kelowna BC you have to look it up it's it's um one of the most beautiful places in the world and ranked the most beautiful city in our province it's got lakes wineries um mountains and it's so gorgeous there uh, so for lo location scouting must have been a piece of cake no for this film Actually, it was. Yeah, we had a yeah. lot of favors and it was very easy to find locations. Our community was very, very supportive. So we're very grateful for that. 
Uh -huh. I mean, you, you said that, that the, the, the cast, I imagine the, the girls, the Seven Sins, they hung out a lot when they weren't on, on set, no? But at the same yeah. time, it's, I love the relationship because it's, it's not just a couple, it's a group of seven people, seven different people. So I'm interested in how you cast these seven people specifically for the Sins that you wanted them to play, but also how you created this chemistry, which is they're a group of friends, but at the same time, there's all these different tensions between them. Can you explain a little bit how you decided on which actresses to go with and how you wanted the chemistry to play out? Because it's, one thing is to create a, the chemistry between two, but between a group of seven must have been really quite complex, especially in the, uh, the script stage of the, of the production. Yeah, you know, it was um, quite an interesting casting process. We had well over 300 girls audition and um, we knew quite quickly who we wanted to cast. And, uh, it was it was interesting to see all the girls bring their unique characters to life, and I think they did a lot of bonding with not only each other as friends, but as a group in a setting. And they're still friends to this day, and we have group chats, and we still stay in touch. And so I think it's really unique and special to have that bond, especially on your first feature, where their relationship with each other was very organic, and they're actually still friends to this day. Uh -huh. And I was speaking to. Um to Brenner and, and Caitlin just now. And they said that the, there was, I don't know if, they, they, if it was your suggestion, but they, they, they mentioned films like Heather's, um, I can't remember if it was Scream, or I know what you did last summer, which are films that, that go back quite a bit, but it does share similarities this film. Um, Jawbreaker. Jawbreaker, that's right. Yeah, they mentioned Jawbreaker as well. So I imagine that you wanted, it's, it's subconsciously or unconsciously, I'm sure, some of the inspiration came from that. But at the same time, I imagine that at the back of your mind, you always wanted to make sure that it, it didn't go down the same route. You wanted it to be different. Mm -hmm. For you, what was important that you wanted this, this film to stand out from those kind of films? Yeah, I think those are such incredible films and there's similar elements in all of them. And Quentin Tarantino says it best, you know, great artists borrow inspiration from each other. And I think that's what we all do. And um, it's what makes the film so relatable and iconic um, is that it does have those comparables, but also still is unique in its own right, where I don't think anyone's yet to do seven girls embodying the seven sins. We wanted to create more of a murder mystery thriller where good girls are doing bad things, and but they're not only the bad characters. I think there's good and evil in all of us. I think that each character in the story has good moments and also bad ones. Even if you look at one of the most holy characters, who's the pastor played by Tamil Pennicut, um, you know, he's so strict on his daughter and who's to say whether that's right or wrong. You know, there's so many different forms of parenting and so many different beliefs and systems now and days and it's who's to say who has the golden you know by almighty this is right this is wrong but um there's definitely a huge difference in good and evil and i think it's very evident in the film that the moral of the story is of the greater good and to do good things and this is what could potentially happen if you don't well pushing the boundaries in that way obviously uh aubrey brenner she she i don't, I don't want to give any spoilers away but she had a very, the very difficult task of playing her role, but also being the narrator. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously just being the narrator in itself is a, a task in itself, but to be a narrator without revealing any of the twists and turns must've been very complicated because of just a slight change in pitch and tone. And it's, it's easy to give something away. I believe she worked very closely with you on that to get it just right. Yeah, I'm so glad you noticed that. It's such a fine balance where exactly that. She couldn't reveal herself. Um, I don't want to reveal any spoilers for those who haven't seen the movie yet, but it's interesting the way she narrates the film and you never really know the killer is. She's done such an incredible job with that and honestly is such a powerhouse performer. Um, there's a reason why she was also nominated for a Leo, but Brenna was great. You know, we would have to be acting they would be acting in the scene and I'm like, okay, everyone. And just like still continue on existing here, but this is voiceover. So we're still like living, you know? So you have to remember where the certain voiceover pauses and moments are gonna be because they were all premeditated. Whereas a lot of filmmakers will do voiceover after. I think that's a unique skill in itself because we we knew where it was going. So we really like work it into this, to the story, you know? 
Um, but yeah, Brenna and I spent hours in ADR and it was tough because we were in two different cities. So she would be in Vancouver and from LA, I'd be like in the session directing her online and she took all of the notes and honestly, she's so wonderful. So yeah, it's, it's interesting that you nice. noticed that. Nice. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you yeah. did a good job, a good job. <laughs> so, but no, so just to finish off then, um, obviously you mentioned that you want, you got a film called, um, I, what was the one that you said that you wanted to, Neon Candy that you wanted, you wanted to, to, want to get done. But I spotted on, I think it was Instagram, that you've been location scouting for an action western. Is that right? Yeah, uh, yeah we wanted to. Can you tell us a little, bit, a little bit about that? Well, we actually, we have one film that we shot already. So it's our second feature. Um, it's been kept under wraps, but we completed a feature film in October. So we're in post on our second movie now. And Arclight is going to be doing a big press release exclusive about that uh, during EFM. But the Western action thriller, I think, is going to be one of the later movies to come so probably our mm -hmm. fifth film so we want to do we have chapel coming out and then we'll do neon candy croquet and then this western action thriller which is actually about sex trafficking it's called sweethearts and yesterday um someone asked if they could option the script so we're not sure at this point should we option it should we hang on to it and do it ourselves so we're kind of like pending what we should do with that project of course with the blessing of our other co-writers um so yeah we'll see what happens uh, and are there very are there very heady subjects that you address there? Themes that you you like to 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 kind of shine a light on that in the similar vein to, to this one? All of them. I love female driven stories, and I think that all stories are very important. And if you're going to be in this industry to make art, it should be about something relevant, socially relevant, or you know, sending a message. Um, I think all of our stories have unique messages, and they're all of deep and important meaning. So we're really proud of that. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Well, I wish you the best of luck with this film when it comes out next week. Thank and so I hope to speak to you about one of the many projects you've got uh, under wraps for the Sounds near and the future. Thank you. Thank all right. You. Thanks very much for speaking, Connie. Okay. It's been nice to speak to you. All the, all the best. Take care. Don't you want to be bad for once in your life?